Good evening. Welcome to the Valentine's Day edition, February 14th, 2022, meeting of the Stillwater City Council. This time I will call the meeting to order and I'll ask that you all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'll just note at the outset, we, uh, we're, we're down two counselors tonight. Counselor Hawkins, I think, had a family commitment, and Counselor Clark had to go out of state for a funeral. So we're just three of us tonight, but that's a quorum, so we'll move forward. First up tonight, uh, we have a presentation by Chief Jeff Watts of the Stillwater Police Department Citizen Appreciation Award. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Counselors. About two years ago, Police Department implemented a new award that we call a Citizens Appreciation Award. And the concept behind this award is, is that we would be able to recognize the great work of some of our citizens whenever they went above and beyond. And tonight, we want to honor one of our uh, citizens, Mr. Damon Eugene Cox. Mr. Cox, would you come on up, please? I'm going to read the award that we have here to present to Mr. Cox. Mr. Cox, please consider this Citizens Appreciation Award as our way of acknowledging your heroic actions on Friday, December the 24th, um, 2021. On that day, your neighbor, seven-year-old Raja Brown, was playing jump rope in her front yard. There were two other children in the yard with Raja, but no adults were present. Raja's family had recently taken in a two-year-old pit bull, and unfortunately, the animal attacked Raja while she was playing. When you saw the dog attacking Raja, you immediately sprang into action. You entered their yard and were able to get the dog off of her and prevent further attack. From there, you led all three children inside their home to safety. The pit bull pursued the children into the house, but you caught the dog and threw him out before he could attack them further. Sir, without hesitation, you placed yourself at significant risk to save Raja and the other two children. Raja did sustain multiple injuries from the attack, including puncture wounds to her abdomens, hips, buttocks, and legs. However, the officers who responded to the scene said it was evident that because of your actions, Raja did not receive life-threatening injuries. Your actions on Friday, December 24th, 2021, were selfless and life-saving. On behalf of the Stillwater Police Department and our entire community, thank you for placing yourself in danger to save the life of a child. Jeff Watts, Chief of Police, City of Stillwater. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Mr. Cox. That is a, a wonderful deed, and we appreciate your service to your neighbors. Thank you. thank you for being here tonight. Next up is the swearing in of myself. I guess I'll come down to the front to do that. I, William H. Joyce, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend, that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution of the United States of America, and the Constitution of the State of Oklahoma, and the Constitution of the State of Oklahoma. And I will not knowingly receive, and I will not knowingly receive directly or indirectly, directly or indirectly, any money or other valuable thing, any money or any valuable thing for the performance or non-performance, for the performance or non-performance of any act or duty pertaining to my office of any act or duty pertaining to my office other than the compensation allowed by law other than the compensation allowed by law and i further swear and i further swear that i will faithfully discharge my duties that i will faithfully discharge my duties of the office of city of stillwater mayor of the office of city of stillwater mayor office number five office number five to the best of my abilities to the best of my abilities congratulations thank you so much Joe. <laughs>
Thank you, Judge Ron. Appreciate that. All right. Next up is the election of Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor Zanotti has been serving faithfully in this role for a couple of years now, at least. Just one? <laughs> Just one? Time flies. The last couple of years have been kind of a blur. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to nominate Vice Mayor Zanotti to continue to serve as Vice Mayor, and I will make that nomination now. A second. We have a nomination and a second. Please vote. You have to vote for yourself. That's a little strange to vote for yourself. <laughs> With a vote of three to zero, Elaine Zanotti is elected as Vice Mayor. All right, next up we have the consent docket. Counselors, questions, comments, or motions? I, I would actually like to remove item D from the consent docket. Motion to approve the consent docket minus item D. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. The vote of three to zero, the consent docket is approved. Public comment on items not scheduled. We don't have anyone signed up. On items removed from the consent docket, I pulled item D, which is uh, approval of a salary modification for city manager Norm McNichol. Something that was discussed in executive session among the counselors and um, due to the fact that Mr. McNichol hadn't had a salary adjustment since he was hired here as the city manager uh, and due to his uh, performance, uh, wonderful performance during the last couple of years of very trying circumstances, this was a salary increase that we felt was justified under the circumstances. And I just wanted to make sure that that was noted and um, that we had a chance to vote on it. You so, bet. any comments on that? I will make a motion then to approve item D from the consent docket. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. With a vote of three to zero, item D is approved. Uh, takes us to nine general orders. First up is presentation of the Stillwater Fire Department annual report from Chief Terry Essery. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. Thank you for having me. My name is Terry Esri, and I'm your Fire Chief. And tonight we wanted to share our annual report with you and let you know what we've been working on over the last year and the direction that we're headed into 2022. So as you can see, the first picture of the annual report is our beautiful new Pierce ladder truck in front of Boone Pickett Stadium, and it really says all it needs to say. Picture's worth a million words on that one. That's a great picture. Uh, so does, we're just gonna dive right into it. Our mission is simple. We respond quickly, we perform professionally, we save lives and property, and we are caring and compassionate. That's what we do every single day. We work out of four fire stations. Uh, the oldest one was built in 1938. The most recent one, which is Station 4, was built in 1984. We have, including myself, we have 74 uh, sworn firefighters, and I am glad to say that right now we are fully staffed. So we are very, very fortunate uh, that we have attracted great people, not just from the local area, but from the East Coast and the West Coast. So. Um, I'm very, very proud of that. We, we, have, we have done a great job of that, and we've done that together. Before you move on, yes. did you say that the newest fire station was built in 1984? That is correct. Station 4 was built in 1984. Yes, sir. Seems like it might be time. It, it might be, yes. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, absolutely. Be glad to. So for last year, post-COVID, we ran 3,888 calls. About half of them, as you can see, were EMS calls. Uh, fire alarms were about a quarter at 25%. Grass fires, 6%. Vehicle accidents with injuries, 6%. And structure fires, actual working structure fires were 2%. Um, and I just want to note that before COVID, the call volume was about 5,000 calls per year. Uh, during COVID, the numbers went down considerably. And we found some ways to really uh, add some efficiencies into the type of calls that we responded to, to make it safe for the, commu for, for the community, for the first responders, and, um, and still make sure that we have uh, the, the right services available for, for people when they call us. So, um, so we did use COVID to our advantage when we could. 
And this is a, is a map of our four districts, and there's some confusion here, and it, it's 100% my fault. The numbers on the top left corner, uh, that's actually about 10 years worth of data. So that doesn't correlate with, with the previous slide. So um, moving forward, we'll take care of that and make sure that does, doesn't cause any confusion again. Uh, but I really wanted you to see just kind of the, the districts and how they're laid out. And as you can see, Station 2, which is in blue, uh, there's some overlap between the green, which is Station 3, and the red, which is Station 1. So, uh, and, and again, to kind of explain how these are built, they're built off of four-minute response times from the time our wheels start rolling until the time we get to your emergency, uh, the standard is to be there within four minutes. And this, this is how these districts are built. So if we could shift that up to the northwest a little bit, that would even that out, uh, reduce the overlap, and really improve the efficiency of the services there. 2021 accomplishments. We uh, are very happy to say that we provided a second set of bunker gear for all frontline firefighters. We provided a new set of wildland slash rescue gear for all frontline firefighters. We placed our new 107 foot Pierce ladder truck into operational service. We implemented compliance, the, the compliance engine to assist the fire marshal's office and he's the expert on that so I'm not gonna dive too deep but now we have a way of tracking our 1500 and so I think it's 1521 uh, occupancies with fire protection systems and we can we're glad to say we were at 99 percent compliance and and if you ask me what that was before we had no way of knowing but now we do we implemented a new awards program placed f new thermal imaging cameras into operational service we added new pro protocols for investigations funerals awards and commendations and for high fire danger days uh, we have designed and ordered two Pierce engines to replace engine one and engine four, and we are still on track to get those by the end of the year. We got those ordered in time um, to where we're still on track to get those in a, in, in a timely fashion. We developed and implemented a chief's newsletter to improve communication from administration to the company level, and we were able to send two of our members to the National Fire Academy. And we're gonna continue our accomplishments here and we, we made improvements to our facilities to include new HVAC units at station two, four in fire administration. We replaced the showers at fire station one. We replaced the entire back ramp behind fire station one. We replaced a bay heater at fire station one. And we replaced the main sewer line at fire station three. We were also able to replace a gear washer extractor at fire station one and what that does, that, that takes that it cleans all the contaminants and the carcinogens out of our bunker gear after we get back from a fire or a hazmat incident. And we do have one of those at each station. So after we received our ladder truck this, this last year, we were able to, to have a wet down ceremony for it and it was a lot of fun, brought the community together and, and just celebrate one of our accomplishments. And as we bring these two new pumpers, engines back into service this next year, we're gonna do the same thing for them. So we're really excited about that. So as we move forward into next year, which is this year, um, we obviously goal setting is a huge priority for us so we can stay on track and let everybody know what we're shooting for. And uh, happy to say that we will be implementing a new radio system. Thank you, thanks to you all. We appreciate that very much. We're gonna take possession of the two new Pierce engines, hopefully in December. Uh, we are gonna work on developing and implementing a comprehensive safety, health, and wellness program. We will be installing countdown timers into apparatus bays to help reduce response times. We will be implementing new tracking and record keeping software. We are already in the process of developing an officer training program and uh, we will continue to plan for the relocation of Fire Station 2 and implement operational enhancements into the station design. We are fixing to initiate quarterly meetings between the Fire Marshal's Office and frontline personnel. And uh, very, very soon we will be conducting a new Insurance Services Office evaluation, so we're excited for that. 
And um, this next one, we just last week completed it. We have a new assistant chief, Brandon Holcomb, and he's here tonight. So we're very, very excited to bring him on board. He's going to do amazing things. And of course, we will continue to review all administrative policies and processes to find inefficiencies and outdated practices. And I would love to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Chief. Counselors? Okay. No questions? All right. Chief, you're so thorough. It's hard to, it's hard. I, don't know. I didn't want to go I, too long, but I wanted I, to at least give you some information that was, was worthwhile. It was wonderful. I truly Great, appreciate you. all thank of the you. updates and to understand you. what you all are doing. Yeah. I mean, we're always so thankful and grateful for the work that you do, but it is really nice to see it thank you. Um, laid out for us and to know yeah. what you're working on and yeah. what you've accomplished this last year is um, it's really great. I don't know if I, I just okay. don't think I have any questions. I'm just thinking. The question you. I had was, yeah. are you fully staffed? And you answered that we are, um, with yeah. 74. We so are. that's got to be. Um, we are excited. Very exciting. Yes. yes. And if there's some things that you would like to see in this report moving forward, please let us know and we'll, we'll incorporate them and uh, improve it every year. I'm excited to see a new fire station in that yes. report sometime soon. Yes, sir. We'll be talking about that a lot as a community over the next uh, yeah. month or so. And, yeah, we're, uh, we're excited. It's helpful to see those response times and yes. see that map, and, and yeah. you know, it gives, gives us an idea of, of okay. one of the reasons why it's, uh, it's yeah. a good idea, to, a good idea to get that new station good. built. Good. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Chief. Next up, we have 9B, Award approve an award of a unit price contract to lock construction for Husband Street bridge replacement. Mr. Carnes. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, way back in fiscal year 14, City Council approved several bridge projects. Um, I believe three of those were completed. Two of those um, were put on hold. Uh, designs were about 90% complete when the funding shortfall occurred. In fiscal year 19, the City Council approved uh, Rian and approved those projects and the funding for the Husband Bridge over East Boomer Creek and the Third Avenue Bridge over East Boomer Creek. We got with the engineer, they had to go back, coach, change, double check some things, and then finish the design. We were just about to go out to bid when COVID hit. <laughs> These were two of the projects that we put on hold because we did not know what the funding situation was going to be. We also believe there might be federal funds available for shovel-ready projects, and these were indeed shovel-ready. Those funds did not become available. So we have bid those to, uh, both those projects in January. We will talk about the Third Avenue Bridge in March at the next meeting. The Husband Street Bridge, uh, we had two bidders. Lop Construction Company at, at almost $1.2 million. <clears throat> CP Integrated Services at $1.7 million. The engineer's estimate was about $1.3. We've reviewed the bids with the engineer. We think uh, all of the bids are qualified and are good bids. And we're, uh, the low bid is within the budget. And we're here to uh, recommend that we award the contract to Lop. Happy to answer any questions, and I'll give you a motion when you're ready. Counselors? <coughs> Monty, just for everyone's um, memory, which part of, which Husband Street Bridge is this? This is the one over East Boomer Creek at the high school yep. and at Brentwood. Okay. And we have worked with the high school on the timing of this project. To, and we're working to get it done over the summer. We plan to start in May, and so that we'll have the least amount of disruption to them that we possibly can. Mm -hmm. They were very gracious to uh, give us some temporary right away to uh, complete the project. Good cooperation with our school partners. Good. <coughs> what is your recommendation? Uh, we recommend a motion to award a unit price contract to LOP Construction for the Husband Street Bridge replacement in an amount not to exceed 1,300,000, which includes a contingency and authorize the city manager to sign the contract documents. Thank you, Monty. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Counselors? Motion to accept staff's recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second to, accept, to accept staff's recommendation to award the contract. Please vote. 
This vote of three to zero, that item is approved. It's exciting to be able to finally move forward on a project that's been <laughs> yes. in planning since 2014. All right, that takes us to item 10, which is ordinances. I'm gonna long ordinance title to read. Maybe before I read it, uh, Ms. Carley, could you kind of give us a, a brief overview of this Sure, ordinance 3490 is in response to code enforcement and city departments um, identifying a need to address the current junk vehicle ordinance. Currently, the ordinance falls short of providing a process for abatement of junk vehicles in the city. So um, in summary, the proposed changes um, clean up the ordinance um, to improve the definitions. It uh, creates a process by where the code enforcement officers can issue citations following notice to the registered owner or property owner where their junk vehicle is located. It allows for a hearing process for the junk vehicle um, owner and or the property where the vehicle sits and creates an, a, a process for abating. Seems like it's a good thing to have uh, options on what to do once you've issued a citation here. Yes, so. and code enforcement officer Paul Bostic is here to answer questions if the council has any additional questions. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah. Councilors, uh, well, at this point, I'll read the ordinance on first read, and then if you guys have questions, we can talk about them in a second. Everybody take a deep breath. <clears throat> ordinance on first read, Ordinance 3490, an ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending Chapter 18, Environment, Article 5, Junk or Abandoned Vehicles, to amend section 18-128, definitions, by adding definitions for director, enforcement officer, and operable condition, amending section 18-129, violations, by providing that the enforcement officer has the ability to issue citations following notice, amending section 18-130, <coughs> storing, parking, etc., by providing that junk vehicles are a public nuisance, amending section 18-131, general responsibility for removal, by changing it to exceptions and setting out exceptions to article, excuse me, exceptions to section 18-130. Amending section 18-132, notice to remove, by changing it to rebuttable presumption and setting out criteria that establishes a junk vehicle. Amending section 18-133, content of notice, by changing it to notice to abate junk vehicle. Establishing the requirement for a notice of junk vehicle. By adding section 18-134 hearing that sets forth the procedure for a hearing before the community development director and providing for the appeal to the city manager. Adding section 18-135 removal of junk vehicle, which provides for removal. Adding section 18-136 notice of removal, which provides for notification of the registered owner of a junk vehicle and repealing all ordinances to the contrary and providing for severability. Councilors, any questions? Is there a motion? Motion to advance ordinance number 3490 to second reading. Second. We have an ordinance. We have a motion and a second to advance the ordinance to second read. Please vote. With a vote of three to zero, the ordinance is advanced to second reading. I will just say we appreciate the code enforcement um, team here and Officer Bostic and, and all that they do to keep our community safe and clean and free of public nuisances. That takes us to item 11, reports from officers and boards. Ms. Carnley. Two items, request for an executive session pursuant to 25 OS 307 B1 for the, of the Oklahoma Open Meeting Act for the purpose of confidential communication regarding the employment, appointment, promotion, demotion, disciplining, or resignation of City Attorney Kimberly Carnley. And two, a request for an executive session pursuant to 25 OS 307 B4 for the purpose of confidential communication with the city attorney regarding ongoing opioid litigation. It is the opinion of the city attorney that public disclosure of this matter will seriously impair the ability of the city council to process the claim or conduct a pending investigation, litigation, or proceeding in the public interest. Thank you. Mr. McNichol. Thank you, Mayor. Stillwater Animal Welfare is full of adoptable cats and dogs waiting for a home. They've recently re received a large number of stray dogs, causing them to reach their maximum kennel capacity. If you're missing your pet or looking to adopt a new one, contact Still Stillwater Animal Welfare at 405-372-0334. Excuse me. <coughs> That's it. That's it. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the work that the Animal Welfare Department does as well. And, um, 
there are a lot of animals that go through uh, yes. the welfare animal welfare department, and uh, that's unfortunate reality of our community. And we certainly hope that folks will take a look and see if there's. I don't know anybody that needs another dog at this point, but I mean, you're up to two, yeah, right? I, uh, you know, <laughs> three's a charm. You never know. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Advice, Mayor Zanotti. Uh, the city's spring household hazardous waste collection event will be held Saturday, April 23rd from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Convenience Collection Center. During this event, residents can drop off household pollutants like oil-based paints, pesticides, herbicides, and household cleaning products and more free of charge. This event only happens twice a year, so now, if the time, now is the time to start gathering up these hazardous items that can't be tossed with your regular trash. Visit stillwater.org slash HHW for a full list of accepted items. And this really is a helpful, mm -hmm. helpful day. Yes, so April 23rd, 8 to 1. Thank you very much. Councillor Jalowski. Yes. City offices will be closed for President's Day on Monday, February 21st. Trash and recycling will still be collected, but not yard waste. Make sure to set your carts out by 6 a.m. because collection routes can vary. Thank you very much. Uh, I will let you know that if you're looking for an environmentally friendly way to save money on your water bill, you may want to purchase a rain barrel through the city of Stillwater. These barrels capture water from your roof and store it for future use. Using rain barrels also helps reduce the stormwater pollution by minimizing the amount of stormwater runoff that leaves the site. Keep an eye out for the rain barrel displays that will be put up in the city hall and at the library or visit stillwater.org for details on how to order your barrel. Uh, I would also like to let you all know that we are going to we are appointing a transportation oversight board uh, with the passage of the new half cent sales tax or additional half cent sales tax. Um, we are going to set up a board that helps review projects, helps uh, look over uh, that sales tax money and make sure it's going where the citizens of our community want it to go. And so there will be applications available on the website, sorter.org. If you go under citizen boards and I think it's citizen boards and committees. Yes, uh, there will be an application there if you'd like to help serve on the transportation oversight board. All right. At this time, I will recess the city council meeting, and we will move over to the Stillwater Utilities Authority. So at this time, I will call to order the Stillwater Utilities Authority meeting for February 14th, 2022. First on the agenda is the consent docket. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. With a vote of three to zero, the consent docket is approved. Under general orders, we have approval of a contract with the Republic Services for acceptance, storage, and transport of recyclables and other refuse. Mr. Chris Knight. Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. Chris Knight, Waste Management Director. Uh, before I get started, I'll point out I do have two separate motions that will have to be voted on separately. On November 1st, 2021, I provided the, trustee, the trustees a, re, uh, a report, an update, letting them know the recycling stage and facility, letting you know the recycling stage and facility. Uh, was, the cost had increased from $1.6 million to $3.2 million. And I also informed the trustees uh, that the staff had been provided with a potential alternative uh, solution that we felt that it was worth exploring and uh, asked for approval to advertise two RFPs. The first RFP was for acceptance and storage of recyclable materials, transport of recyclables to a MRF, acceptance of yard waste, and acceptance of, acceptance of disposal of refuse. The second one was for recycling processing. Staff has received a total of seven submittals for both RFPs, and we believe the two recommendations I will be providing tonight match the two main objectives the Recycling Task Force was trying to accomplish with their recommendation to the trustees for the construction of the recycling <coughs> staging facility. Those two objectives were to keep the recycling, recycling program operational and to have the recyclables processed at a MRF. I would also like to refer back to the December 7, 2020 meeting when the trustees approved resolution SUA 2020-8, adopting a rate increase of 11.5% in 2021 and 4% in 2023. 
Uh, with the new two different options I'll be recommending tonight, I had the consultant that did the cost of service study for us, new gen strategies. Look at those two options with those rate increases uh, to one, to see if the rate increases would cover the cost of the two recommendations. Two, see if the rate increases could possibly be reduced and still cover the cost of the two options. <coughs> After they, you know, they plugged the numbers into their model they used for the cost of service study, the approved rate increases will cover the cost of the two options with no additional increases. However, uh, we won't be able to reduce those rates, those increases. Do you have any questions? Trustees? So, Chris, to be clear, so what will happen here is instead of us taking recyclables to the current processor, um, Republic Services will pick those up and take them to Tulsa? We'll collect it, and uh, Republic Services is going to build a, uh, a structure that we can dump the recyclables into, which will be located out at the landfill, but it won't be up the hill at the okay. landfill. It'll be down below. So we'll dump the recyclables there. And then they'll load them, and then they'll haul them to the MRF that I'm going to recommend tonight. Okay. Okay. We also felt, you know, since we had this potential option after we got the RFPs back, you know, everything that we collect can go to one spot, and we'll have one contract. So is this a is this a long term solution? I mean, when we talked about building our own transfer facility, it was because the current contract's ending, and we need some right. better option with what to do with our recycling. Well, it'll be a 10-year contract with two five-year options, so up to 20 years. Okay. So it's not a just a temporary fix until we can get back on track with No, the, no, it's not a temporary fix. Yeah. It's a long-term solution. And how, how do you feel about it? I mean, when we talked initially about building our own station versus doing this, we went with building our own station instead right. of doing something like this. I mean, it, given, I mean, it, the cost, we can't really build our own. Right. Facility, I think with the increase in cost and everything, this is the best possible solution to keep our recycling program going uh, as it currently is and to get the material to what we believe is a better place to have it processed correctly. Yeah, because that was one of the major concerns was that the recyclables we were collecting weren't all being processed the way they need to be processed. Correct. They have not been. Yeah. And uh, um, there's three MRFs in Oklahoma, and you know, they all could have done a good job. The one I'm recommending just was at a lower cost. Okay. So, Chris, I think you answered this question already, but just to be clear for the public, so the recycling at the curb, nothing will change from the customer's side of the recycling program that's correct nothing will change on the collection side everything will happen just the way it, it it's been happening for quite a few years now uh, we'll still collect it and the only thing that changes is as to where we're taking it and um to dispose of or to you know dump it temporarily and then what changes is where it's going to be processed that's really the only two things that are changing are there any efficiencies offered with the Republic Services? I know one of the some of the things we were talking about with the recycling task force with commercial recycling and some of those things. Is there is any of that included, or is this strictly kind of the residential pickup? Well, it'll include like everything that we take in at the convenience collection center. Any of the cardboard that we collect from commercial customers, it'll all go to Republic Services facility, and then it'll all go to the MRF. And then from a billing perspective, the, the current escalators that we had in there is sufficient. So yes, they will, they will cover the cost of these two options. Okay. And you said it's a 10-year contract with two five-year options? Two possible two fives. Is there a um, ability, or are they, do they have any ability to change rates in the middle of that? Are the rates fixed for the first 10 years? What, what are the, how, how do the rates get adjusted? Yeah, Republic's provided a um, draft contract that my office is still reviewing, so we're still working through all those, but the idea is that the rates that they submitted with their um, RFP would be the rates, and there would be a CPI adjustment provision in the contract, as well as um, 
a fuel, fuel cost adjustment um, that's structured more like a fee. Okay. I'm just I'm because just, they're actually transporting it once it's here, it has to go to Tulsa. So. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's a world in which we come back here in another couple of years and they say, well, we've got to, they've got to raise their rates, and so therefore we're going to have to pass on more. I mean, that, that would be my concern with using going this direction instead of building our own facility, is right. that we're now a little bit at the mercy of them wanting to change rates, and, and we're going to have to deal with that. Well, like stated, there will be the normal CPI that's in our current contracts, okay. um, and we do believe the, the, the fuel uh, potential increase in fuel is fair since they are transporting it to Tulsa and fuel goes up. And um, but outside of that, you know, we we have a template and um, the fees that are in there that you'll approve will be the fees that we pay. You know, outside the CPI and the potential fuel. Okay. It's supposed to be fair. If we built our own facility, we would have those fuel costs as well. We so that increase right. would be something we, we would absorb, to, yeah. whether it was our fleet. So, fuel. you know, um, with the increased cost, uh, I did also have the consultant figure what the increased cost of that facility, what we'd have to do in that scenario. And we would have to raise the rates additional 3.5% from what we've already done. Um, to be able to potentially pay for that facility constructing it. Then the other problem is, to be honest with you, we were going to have to hire four additional people, employees for the facility, and um, we're not having a whole lot of luck of hiring right now. So I, that concerned me of just having bodies to be able to operate it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about those rate increases based on the idea of, well, this is what we're going to have to do in order to continue the recycling program the way it is and the way we feel the community wants it to be continued. And if this option allows that same goal to be met, then it seems reasonable to, you know, it, it's a different method than we were planning on using when we, we talked about that, but the goal is still the same. Right. So like you said, we want to continue the recycling program and we want the recyclables to actually be recycled. Right. Um, and it sounds like this is a, um, the best option we have to actually meet those goals. And, and I do believe, you know, I did speak with uh, several of the recycling task force members, uh, the ones that were able to meet, and uh, those, ended, there's about six or seven was the only one that attended the meeting, but they were all in favor of this option. They were okay with it. And I truly believe if the whole group would have had this option on the table, it's something they would have considered uh, heavily, because like I said, they just wanted to be able to keep the recycling program going at the cheapest cost possible and get it to a true MRF. That was their main objectives. Mm -hmm. I think you spoke that really well. I think that's exactly kind of as we worked through that task force, it kind of crystallizes exactly what they were trying to get after. Right. And I think it's maybe worth mentioning just to kind of remind everybody as we were initiating that task force and some of the initial findings in that task force, I think is it 70% of our community that recycles, uses our recycling program, 60, 60 to 70%? Yeah, it was 67, 68%, something like that, you know. That, that, that number really kind of came from the people that are actually what you, you know, placing the, the cart at the curb. But, mm -hmm. you know, we believe, well, we know 85% of the community has a cart that, you know, they just don't place it out regularly but uh, at least 67% of the people who have a cart are putting it out every week. Yeah, I just think that speaks to yeah. how important this yep. is in our community, that people want it. It was something the task force was really working hard to protect that participation. Yeah, if, if those of you who, who may not remember that whole process, I mean, that was a long process of, of several meetings and, and a big group of recycling task force folks that went through and came up with that goal of, of saying we want to keep this and we want to get it to a MRF. And so um, you know, I think this was a, a good example of, of community involvement, engagement, people coming together and having these conversations. And so I do feel good about the, the goals that we're trying to meet here are actually goals that the community set for itself. And so um, you know, that, that does make me feel uh, better about, about this option as well. Okay, so. Chris, what is your first recommended action? Okay, 5A, motion to approve entering into a contract with Republic Services for acceptance, storage, and transport of recyclables, acceptance, and reuse of yard waste, and acceptance and disposal of city refuse 
at the prices indicated in this report and authorize the general manager to sign the contract. Thank you, Chris. Trustees, is there a motion on the item? Motion to approve staff's recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Items approved by a vote of three to zero. And then what is your recommendation on item 5B? 5B, motion to approve entering into a contract with Tulsa Recycle and Transfer, Transfer Corporation for recyclable material processing services at the prices indicated in this report and authorize the general manager to sign the contract. Thank you, Chris. Trustees? Motion to approve staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the item. Please vote. That item is approved by a vote of three to zero. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for all you, your hard work and your team's hard work on, on having to deal with uh, a change in the, in the, uh, the plan. Uh, we appreciate your... That is the last item on the SUA agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn SUA. Please vote. A vote of three to zero. The Story Utilities Authority meeting is now adjourned. At this point, uh, I will reconvene the City Council meeting at item 13 on the agenda, and I would ask if there's a motion to enter executive session for the purposes requested by the City Attorney. Motion to enter executive session. Second. We have a motion and a second to enter executive session. Please vote. With a vote of three to zero, the City Council will now enter executive session. Here we go. There we go. Uh, is there a motion to reconvene City Council? Motion to, motion to reconvene. Second. We have a motion and a second to reconvene the City Council. Please vote. With a vote of three to zero, we are now back in open session after our executive session. Um, is there any motions regarding executive session? Yes, motion to approve the employment contract with City Attorney Kimberly Carnley. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve an employment contract with Kimberly Carnley. Please vote. With a vote of three to zero, that employment contract is approved. Is there any other action from executive session? None. No other action. Uh, that takes us to the end of the agenda. Is there any motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the City Council. Please vote. With a vote of three to zero, the City Council is now adjourned, and that concludes our meetings for this evening. Have a